Revelation chapter 5. We've been inching our way through the book of Revelation. And today I think should be a lot of fun. Learn what the scriptures have for us. We'll see what God can reveal to me in an instant. I didn't have a lot of time to preparation this morning because uh, we were just busy uh, enjoying ourselves soul winning and it was just so hard to get back in time. So here we are and we're in the book of Revelation, continuing our study, like I said, in Revelation chapter 5. And I will begin by reading the whole chapter, Revelation chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open the book, and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and, in, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts, and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of orders, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such are in, as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I sing blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Revelation chapter 5, this is a continuation, it's almost like a segue into what we're about to get into. We just heard of the angels crying out, the, the door open in heaven, the throne room is, is visible now to John, and he sees this great throne before him, and he sees the uh, four and twenty beasts, and the, the, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders singing and doing their, their, their routine of just constantly praising God and constantly praising God and saying there in 4 verse 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. He gives, he gives credence to the fact and gives a firm stamp of the exact purpose of the creation of God, and that's to give glory to God himself and to give pleasure unto him. He is pleased with his creation. He said it is very good. Yeah, men went and messed it up, but the original purpose was that God would fellowship with his people and that they would be with him and enjoy the pleasure of his company and that the whole creation would just support in that relationship and give them the proper setting to have such a wonderful relationship. And as Revelation chapter 5 unfolds, we find first thing that is brought to our attention is the book. Now we all know about our book, correct? I mean, we know that the Bible is our book. It is God speaking to us. It's God's revelation unto us. Our book, according to Psalm in chapter 12, is a pure book. You can go there, Psalm chapter 12. And in Psalm chapter 12, as always, keep your finger there in Revelation. Psalm chapter 12 reads... The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. 
Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. That's verse 6 and verse 7 of Psalm chapter 12. Our book is a pure book. Our book is a clean book. Our book has been purified seven times. We even know in the history of the King James Bible that seven English translations is what the King James Bible is. It's the seventh of them all. Purified, went through this process to be made a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better every time until we have the firm foundation of the King James Bible here in our end. In Job chapter 23, if you were to go there, Job chapter 23, the Bible talks about our necessary Bible. Our necessary Bible. Job chapter 23 and verse 8 says, Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take, and when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Verse 11 says, My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. And this is something to be admired because Job at the time, we think of Job as one of the earliest books that was ever put to pen. He wouldn't have the blessing of the whole of scriptures at his hand. And yet he was walking in the path that God had before him. He was following the word of the Lord that was revealed unto him. And yet he has this, I go forward and he is not there mentality. He goes backwards and he cannot find him. He's grasping to find God. And yet here we are with the Bible that gives us all things which pertain unto life and godliness. And we sometimes walk in our days the same way. Wondering where's God? What's his word for us? What's he trying to say to me? God, where are you? I need you in my life. We can just open in the book and yet we have a man a man of of great blessing a man of great courage of great strength in the old testament that was able to do what we so often lack in and to follow god and to hear him we find a man here that didn't have the same blessing of the scriptures we need to take this and we need to understand the preciousness of the word of god especially when we look into the context of a man it was so precious to him there was barely anything i believe penned at that time for him to review and so yes it makes sense that he would go and look for god and not be able to find him he would go and try to find and look for god and seek after him and not be able to perceive him. But one thing that he did know is that when he follows the way that God has revealed unto him, when he is tried, he shall come forth as gold. Verse 12 says, neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. Whatever was revealed to Job, whatever commandment God had given him, he didn't draw back from it. He didn't, he didn't pull away from it. He stepped forward boldly and did not draw back from the commandment of God's lips and followed it because of this. He says, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. And it was said this weekend in the preaching, it was said, if we have the choice to wake up in the morning and to go without food or to go without the Bible, we should always choose to go without breakfast. We should choose to go without nourishment because the Bible is the most necessary thing, especially unto the believers. If you were to go to Psalm chapter 119, I won't take you there. The Bible says, that word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The word of God is that light. It is that lamp. And so while Job found himself almost scratching at darkness to try to find where he needed to be in God's plan, where he needed to be in God's purpose, what God wanted for him, he's searching, he's seeking, he's in the dark about so many things. We have the very words of God that reveal to us the light before us and give us the opportunity to follow in exact the path that God has before us with that lamp in our hands, that light directing our paths. What a blessing we have today. Back in Revelation chapter 5, we start to read about this book. And there's a specific, I think, difference made in the book that I'm talking about, the King James Bible, and the book that is now in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. That's what it says in verse 1. I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. This book is at God's right hand. It's interesting to note, we know the very word of God is Jesus. And I had to go with uh, somebody through that teaching in John chapter 1 to try to get them cleared up on a few things before they're saved, especially about Jesus being God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. You see that? The Word was God, right? Now it says over here the Word was made flesh. Was Jesus made flesh? Yes, absolutely was. Did we beheld Him? Did we behold Him? Yes, absolutely we did. Now look over here. That Word is God. Oh, I, I don't understand it. No. And I just had to go back and forth and just keep connecting those dots. But the truth is that the Word 
the word of God, the very breathed word of God, the substance of what we know as the scriptures is Jesus in body. Jesus in the flesh, the Bible says. And so it's not astonishing to us then to see in verse 1 it says, In the right hand of him that sat on the throne, this book is there as a type of Christ. Christ, we know, sitteth at the right hand of God the Father, and so it shouldn't be a shock to us when he sees the word here, when John sees the word there, in the right hand of the Father, him that sat on the throne. And another thing about the right hand, I've talked about this before, this is where strength is indicated. This is where, this is where the, 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 the boldness of a man comes from, from his right hand, from his right arm, from his, his strength is, in, is pictured in the scriptures quite often, especially when you look at the right hand of God in the scriptures, it's always talking about his right hand. His right hand doth uphold me. And in his right hand, here there is a book, and it is a great and blessed book. It is written before and on the back side, and the Bible says that it is sealed with seven seals. Now it is natural because of the Christian's um, life, because the words of God give us life. They gave us life. We are born again by the words contained within the scriptures, the Bible says. So it's natural to have the reaction of what you see John have in the next few verses. It says, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. It says, I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. These words are our life. These words are our lamp. These words are pure and necessary, more necessary than even our food. And John knew this. John knew this well. He knew the very word of God. He rests his, his, his head on the breast of Jesus Christ himself. And so he knew that he needed Christ. He knew that he needed the word of God. He penned so much of the scriptures. And so when he saw a book... Maybe it wasn't the Bible that we have today. Maybe it was another book, and I believe it was. When he saw a book in the right hand of God that could not be opened, he wept much. He was brought to tears. Who, who can open this book? We need to know what's in there. Look at that. More than his necessary food, he desired after this book. He desired and craved after it. The Word of God. If it's a book, it's got words in it. If it's in God's hand, it's the Word of God. I need to hear that. Who can open this book? You can see him weeping much. You can see him pouring out his, his, his soul and weeping and just, just begging even that somebody, anybody, it seems like he's looking around and there's no man in heaven. There's no man in earth and even under the earth that is able to open this book and it causes him to weep. Now what about us? Do we have this Bible in our house and is it closed? Do we weep to think about the Bible in our life being closed, but the Word of God not being active and present and, and, and at our fingertips and in our minds and in our hearts and always available? Do we leave and, and, um, and go out and do our daily chores and our daily necessities, go to our workplace and just leave the Bible there closed? Does that cause us to weep? Does that cause us to mourn? Does that cause us great discomfort, great woe and misery to think of a closed book that cannot be opened, a closed book that will not speak to us, a closed book that will not reveal itself to us, it should cause us to weep. Because these are the very words of life. These are the breath that a Christian should have every day. These words should be resonating. They should be meditating upon these things day and night and day and night and day and night. And John knew that. He saw a book and we can't get to it. There's a book in God's hands and he will not open it unto us. No man can open it unto us. No man in the earth can open it unto us. No man is worthy to do such things. But I believe for so many reasons that this can't be the Bible because we do have an open book. We do have everything that we need. We have everything for life, faith, practice contained within the scriptures. You got a question? Your answer's here. You got a concern? Your answer's here. You're worried? You're scared? Your strength is here. Everything that the Christian needs is here. And the Bible records of itself that all are worthy. This is an open book. This is a book that has been revealed unto all of us. The whole world has heard that very message. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's not restricted to special people. It's not 
felt like there are people in heaven and in earth and under the earth that cannot or have not or were never exposed to the scriptures. And so this is a different book. This is a whole different book. And what I think it is, if you were to just turn over a little bit to Revelation chapter 10, it's this book that's being referred to. It says in verse... Revelation 10 and verse 1, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book opened, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot upon the earth. Uh, God, just plead with me right now. Lord, help me to expound these scriptures. We're talking about your words now, and you give power unto them, and you open them up to us, and you are the one that gives light unto these things and illuminates them into our hearts and shows us, Lord, what these words mean, and, and by your Spirit gives us power to do these things. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And if you were to continue reading there in uh, Revelation chapter 10, you have in verse 9, it says, And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. You see how quick John is to see that book as the, as the angel comes down? And to just go right up to him and boldly say, Give me that book. And he said unto him, Take it. Eat it up. I mean, so often we have these scriptures in our house and we don't think to just go and say, God, open this book unto me. God, give me some of this. God, show me this. Give me that little book. Let me see that little book. And yet here, John sees a book in God's hands. And the first thing that he does when it's within his grasp, the first thing that he does when it's opened up to him, says, Give it to me. Can I have this book? Give it to me. I want it now. And the angel says, take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, and it shall be in thy mouth as sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. And so in between that, we have what is the unveiling, or the unsealing, rather, of this very book. And I think when it comes down to the earth, and finally it's been opened, that's when John finally, in the first thing, he desires to jump in there and get a hold of this book. So the thing that happened in that gap is Jesus. And that's the gap in every one of our lives. When you're struggling, when you're suffering, when you're mourning, when you're at loss, when you don't know what to do, the gap is Jesus every time. The problem is always solved by Jesus. And that's what John realized here. He sits and he goes, In heaven and earth there's no man that can open this book. This book is sealed. No one can get it. Even under the earth. We've looked everywhere and this book is not available to be opened. We cannot get at it. And he weeps and he mourns. And one of the elders says unto him, Weep not. Just when I need him, Jesus is near. Just when I falter, just when I fear, Ready to help me, ready to cheer, just when I need him most. Just when I need him, Jesus is strong, bearing my burdens all the day long. For all my sorrow, giving a song, just when I need him most. Just when I need him most, just when I need him most, Jesus is near to comfort and cheer, just when I need him most. Just when I need him, he is my all. Answering when upon him I call, tenderly watching, lest I should fall just when I need him most just when I need him most just when I need him most Jesus is near to comfort and cheer just when I need him most and this is exactly what John had revealed to him just in the nick of time, as soon as he said, there's no man able to open these things, Jesus showed up. The Bible reads in verse 5, Weep not, weep not, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Jesus hath prevailed. Jesus hath prevailed. Jesus hath prevailed. You can see the shouts in heaven. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Psalm 46, 
says that. Jesus has prevailed to come for us. Jesus has prevailed to live perfectly for us. Jesus has prevailed and overcome the cross. Jesus has prevailed over death and hell. Jesus has drawn all men unto himself. Jesus has saved your very soul. And for 2,000 years, he continues to do it again and again and again and again and again. Over and over as promised, Jesus has prevailed. Of course, weep not. Of course, don't fret. Of course, don't doubt. God is here. Glory to God. Jesus has arrived. The Lamb slain from the foundation of the earth is here and hath prevailed to open their seat, open the seals. Who has doubted? Don't doubt. Fear not. As you read through verse 6, it says, And behold, I behold, lo, in the midst of the throne and the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. It's amazing in this passage you've seen Jesus there at the right hand of God as the Word. It's amazing here as you reveal the passage, you see the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of, Je of David, the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth shows up just when we need him most. He is our savior. He is our foundation. He is our love. He is our strength. And he is our son, the Bible says. Verse 7 continues, And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps, and having golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. These were always prepared, as we found out in the previous chapter, that when one cried out, the other fell and worshipped. And when others sang song, the other fell down and praised him. And over and over and over, this, this great drama played out in heaven, where every single time that the angels would sing, the beast would sing and would cry out. The four and twenty elders would take their crowns and cast them as if they were not worthy and fall to the ground. And then they'd be returned unto them. It would happen again and again and again and again and again. It couldn't even happen enough to give God proper praise and proper glory for himself. We see the elders, we see the beasts willingly prostrate, prepared unto praise with harps with them, ready to sing, ready to praise. And in their arms also the vials full of odors, golden vials prepared, and I love this, with the prayers of the saints. And here it is, Christians, there's your encouragement to prayer. Even now there's vials in heaven reserved with the prayers of God. Are you filling them today? Are you giving them strength? Are you praying unto God and asking him for provision, asking him for supplication, shedding tears for the same, crying out for your needs. Are you, are you asking to be counted worthy to overcome the things that are to come in your life and the problems that you're going to face tomorrow and the day after and the day after? Are you filling God's vials in heaven with your prayer, saints? You need to be because they're there and they're ready and they're prepared for the time which is to come when the golden vials will be there full of the orders which are the prayers of the saints and their purpose will be fulfilled in the days to come after this. Their purposes will be fulfilled in the years to come from where we stand now. And the first thing that they do, once they've prostrated themselves and laid out at his feet, once they've had their prayers brought to his presence, with the song in their heart, they begin to sing that new song. We all love how great thou art. We all love how Firm of foundation, leaning on the everlasting arms. Come thou fount of every blessing. And yet in heaven we'll get to sing new songs. We'll get to sing songs written by the Master. Songs written by our Lord. And here, the angels there, the beasts, the four and twenty elders, they sing a new song saying this, Thou art worthy. What a way to start a song, to give worth unto God, to lift Him up and to give Him praise. Thou art worthy to take the book. The immediate response to him taking of that book and being affirmed that he could prevail over the, the, the seals. The immediate response was just to give him glory. Christian, when good things happen in your life, when God answers your praise, are you immediate to sing a new song in your heart? Thou art worthy, Lord. Thou art worthy to take care of my finances. Thou art worthy to keep me safe when I'm traveling. Thou art worthy to help my relations. Thou art worthy to do so much in my life. Thou art worthy here to take the book to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue 
and people and nation and hast made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. Hear the new song. It's not our favorites. It's not our firm foundation. It's not our how great thou art. It's not our everlasting arms, but it's a new song and it has the same heartbeat behind it. The praise and glory of God. That same heartbeat is behind it. Praise and glory unto God. Give glory unto him, all ye saints. Send your prayers his way, all ye who belong unto him. Verse 11 talks about and I behold and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Here a hundred million angels don't find it strange to come to the presence of God and give praise unto him. The song that these elders were singing perhaps didn't even apply to them. And yet they were so happy. Doesn't the Bible say that the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner that repenteth? They are overjoyed to sing the song that applies directly to you believers. These, these beasts and these, and these elders, whatever they were, were overwhelmed with emotion to know that they would have these prayers answered. Perhaps it was that first sinner prayer taken up in that vial. Perhaps it was that first prayer of, of needing supplication from God. Those, those tender prayers that one gives just to give thanks unto God and to ask Him to overcome some of their adversities. And whatever the case, they sang out and said, praise God that we are redeemed by the blood. Praise God we're redeemed out of every kindred, nation, and tongue. Praise God that He has made us priests and kings. Praise God that we shall one day reign with Him. This is all of us. This, this, this is our destiny. If you've believed on Christ today, if you've received Him, if you know that these things are settled in heaven and your salvation is sure in Him, this is you. Kings and priests unto God. And here, 100 million, over 100 million angels are surrounding the throne, just giving glory to God, just celebrating God's wonder and his greatness and they're saying the bible says in verse 12 with a loud voice worthy there it is again worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such are in the sea heard i saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. And sound words Baptist said, Amen. 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 This is the revelation of God himself. This is Jesus Christ coming just in time, just when they needed him. There's a book that's sealed. It's in God's hand. It's the word. It's precious. We need it. We need to know it. We need to hear it. We need to love it. It's there for us, but we can't get at it. And God shows up just when I needed him most and busts that thing open. He's ready to reveal himself unto us. And the only proper response is, it's easy. This isn't something deep in the scriptures. You just follow the angels. You just follow the elders. You just follow the beasts. And just give him praise. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy. The lamb that was slain has received power. And he is worthy. He has received riches. And he is worthy. He has received wisdom, strength, and honor, and glory. And he is worthy. And every creature does the same. And every Part of his creation is the same. And every believer ought to do the same. One day all will bow down and properly give praise and glory unto Amen. God. We have the wonderful blessing. We can do it today. Amen. Again and again and again. Every time he helps you out. Every time he reveals something to you in scriptures. Every time you wake up and take breath, give him praise. He is worthy. He is worthy. Sing that song. Shout it out. Give praise and honor and glory to God that comes just when we need him most. 